What's up guys, welcome back to the workshop. Today we're talking knife anatomy, so we brought in the big guns. We got Steve coming back to join us. Steve, welcome back to the workshop, man. Thank you, Kyle, appreciate it. Yep, Steve's gonna go over some basics on knife blade shapes. He's gonna talk a little about sharpening, we always do. And then we'll talk a little bit more about uh, different types of grinds that are out there. Um, and we're gonna learn a lot, so. All right, Steve, before we get into the different types of blade shapes that are out there, what's in your pocket? Old Faithful. Oh, nice. Yeah, of course. We're all carrying this thing these days, except for yeah. me, of course. I've always got something weird in my pocket, but this is, what is that, Steve? Tell them about it. That is the WorkSharp Bug Out from Benchmade. Um, we did a collaboration with them, so we have our amber scales because that's our brand color. Uh, S20V coated blade deep carry pocket clip, all blacked out hardware. Um, just a, it's a great little all around knife. Yeah, man, that blacked out hardware is, I love that. You can't get that anywhere else. And what else you got going on the blade there? I see a little uh, oh, customization but, going on there. There's a lot of these running around the building now. So um, the guys at Benchmade at the last show is that nice enough to uh, put my initials. So when it goes missing, I know who took it. Legit, I like it, man. <laughs> I'm packing my new baby. We've got the uh, the ProTech Malibu. Picked that up at Blade Show. Pretty stoked on it. Um, the button lock's got the tritium in it, so that's kind of a cool little added detail they did for it. Um, this is the operator, so it's all blacked out, which is how I like pretty much everything. <laughs> Good looking knife. Yeah, buddy. All right, man, let's jump into some knives. All right, guys, so our buddy Ben over at NAFS, um, if you're not familiar with Ben Peterson, um, go check out nafs.com where you can find a poster just like this for yourself. Ben went through the work of going through and making this great diagram of different blade shapes, different grind um, grind styles. Man, he's got even like the different scales you can put. But we're going to use this as an example to go through some blade shapes. So Steve, if you want to start up here in the top left corner, we'll run through it um, and kind of go through some blade shapes for you guys. Excellent. Yeah, we're starting off here. Um, we have a straight back. But generally, what that means is just the back of the knife, the spine comes completely straight out. This is not a great example. It has a bit of a drop right here on the top of this. Mm -hmm. Pretty common. Um, yeah, pretty common. We'll have a nice belly to it all the way up to the point. Um, then we have a drop point. Should be more of this style. Nice belly coming up to it, but you'll notice as it comes out towards the tip, you get this nice drop down to it. Um, great. Really, really popular. There are Probably the most popular yeah. blade shape. See more of those than out anything there else. in the world. Um, we also have a tanto here. Um, tanto, you have a fairly flat section of blade here. <clears throat> no, pardon me. Then it goes into a transition. So basically, you have two separate knives there with a sharp transition in between those two edges. Really cool, bold looking knife, in my opinion, that's for sure. We have the traditional clip point. It's going to come out similar to a drop point, but there's a a more material removed gives you a, a much sharper point to it, easier for piercing things. And there's also the classic Bowie, which is generally just a large clip point knife, usually a fixed blade, fairly long. Mm -hmm. um, then we get into a sheep's foot, which Same is one. the other end of this knife. Really blunted over edge, typically a very straight cutting edge, but the, the nose of it will actually curve down fairly quickly. And similarly is a Warncliffe. Horncliffe generally will taper out a little bit farther. Um, this is kind of a modified Warncliffe, but um, it's one of the closest ones we had. Laying around in the shop. pokey on the end, right? This yeah, a little bit. A... Yeah, it gives you a better um, point to it rather than that real rounded off sheep's foot that we just showed. Um, spear point. This is more of a spear point. Basically what that's telling you is the knife is fairly symmetrical top to bottom and the point will be very centered on the blade itself. So think more of a, like a dagger or an out the front type of a knife, which you too. gets you right into a dagger. I honestly don't know what the difference is between the two of them. I've been researching it. Some people say a dagger is sharpened on both sides, but knife manufacturers will call something that's only sharpened on one side a dagger. So there's, I'm not positive. I've learned one thing as we prepared for this video. You just say modified, and it kind of covers a lot of different the gray areas pretty well. <laughs> yeah, so it kind of goes all, all over the place. Um, then we have a hawk bill or a karambit. Really deep recurves on these things. Yep. Um, a cleaver. 
generally just a larger, thicker, kind of more of a blunt force instrument for breaking down um, chicken and that type of thing to get through bones. Generally a very flat edge here, blunted off front end, so there's no real tip to it or anything. Usually a larger knife typically, yeah, right? But there are like little knife. mini ones, like CRKT makes a mini yeah, cleaver mini and stuff like that. And, stuff yeah. like that. and then we have a what we call a recurve. And the recurve is named for this big recurved section here, similar to the hawk's bill. But a recurve knife will generally will come out and then it'll go into a through that recurve into a belly. So that's a good example of a recurve. Uh, Persian knife is another one we don't have an example of out here for you. But basically that spine is going to curve up and you get a very large belly going all the way up to this really um, defined point. They can get pretty dramatic, can't they, as far as yeah. those, those sweeps go up yeah, upwards? Yeah, Benjamin makes a bedlam that is, it's a beast of a knife and it is, yeah, it's, um, <laughs> it's got quite the blade on it. <laughs> Um, then a modified, this would be similar to, again, a Benchmade like 940, have a small belly in it, but they'll have kind of a, a reverse tanto to it. Okay. Cool. Thanks for running through those, Steve. A, f a couple of them that we get questions on a lot when it comes to the sharpening side of it. Mm -hmm. One of them is going to be that tanto. I'm going to get this out of the way so you can kind of speak to it. But quickly, how would you sharpen a tanto? Okay. So a tanto, as I was stated earlier when we were looking at it, is... You treat it basically as two different, two separate knives. One, you got this flat belly down here and you treat that transition point as the tip. So you don't wanna just roll through that as you sharpen it. You wanna come up, you wanna sharpen just this section. Then we would change the position of the knife and we would sharpen the tanto section of it. Again, you know, you'd have your tip and treat the point as the heel on that. And what that does is it brings those two sharp edges together and you keep that nice sharp transition point on there. Nice. Thanks for answering that one. The other one is going to be the hawksbill or the karambit or any kind of curved blade. Even the recurve mm -hmm. kind of falls in the same category, I feel like, of one of those curving blades. How do you how do you attack yeah. those? They're a little more difficult to sharpen. Um, flat stones generally don't work well because um, right. you can't get a flat stone in there. You're going to be missing part of the knife, so you end up working just on the edges of it, which isn't good for your stone because you're applying a lot of pressure to it and you're only All using a very small yep. section of it. So a karambit or even this recurve here Either one of these work really well on uh, a flexible abrasive, like our um, half by 12 belts or three quarter by 12 belts, because they flex and as you go around them, they will actually conform to the shape of the blade and get that entire recurve done. Nice. The other one is a, a round abrasive. So a round diamond rod or a round ceramic rod will get right up in there and be able to sharpen and touch those up also. Perfect. All right, guys, so at this point, we're gonna have Steve take us through some blade grinds. Um, and one thing that I found myself confused on when I first started learning about how to sharpen a knife is there's blade grinding on the body of the knife and then there's blade grinding at the bevel, which is where you're actually sharpening the knife when you go to resharpen it. So we're gonna go through these and what I've learned, and Steve will go over this for us, but there are flat grinds and convex grinds and those can all happen up in the body of the knife, and then there's also, you can create that on your edge. So Steve, take us right. through this and kind of speak to that a little bit for the audience. Right, so, sure. Um, so we'll just go across here. We have a flat grind here, which is basically your primary is actually a flat grind. There is no convex or hollow on there. You can also do that same type of grind with the flat stone out on the cutting edge. Scandy grind here, you'll see the, the spine of the knife comes straight down into a short primary which actually there is no primary. The primary on a Scandi grind is the cutting edge. So both of these surfaces come all the way down to the cutting edge. Okay. Um, then a hollow grind here is basically you can see this concave shaped here and on the bevel itself, those are created by a either a grinding wheel or an abrasive that is running over the top of a wheel. So you can get that convex shape or, con or hollow grind shape, sorry. Um, convex edge, exact opposite. Now we're going to use a slack belt um, or you can use sandpaper and a mouse pad to come in and basically take all those shoulders off and just give it a nice curve all the way up that side of there. Chisel grind here, one side of that is going to be completely flat. The primary is only on one side and you can either take that down kind of like a scandy all the way all down the to edge. the edge or you can put a um, convex or a flat grind on there for like a micro bevel or a, a, oh. for your cutting edge at the bottom of it. Sure. Either way. And then a compound or along the lines of what we generally do is 
you're gonna have your primary, however that comes down, and then at the very end of it, we're either going to put a flat grind or a um, convexed edge on just the cutting edge. Perfect. Which one would you say is probably most common out there? Um, it's a good question. There's a lot of hollow grind out there. There's a lot of flat grind out there. Um, those would be my two as far as the primary. Mm -hmm. When you get into um, actually sharpening, the two most down, popular down you're going to see. Down at the bevel, yes. Um, you're going to see flat and con um, flat and um, convex mostly. Sure. All right, Steve, for this next part, we're talking angles. These are questions we get all the time. What angle do I sharpen my knife to? And one thing that I want to let the audience know is when we're talking angle, we're talking about the bevel or that primary that we just went over in the previous section here. So quickly for the audience, kind of describe how to define the angles on your knives. Okay. Yeah, easily. Um, so as Kyle just mentioned, when we're talking angles, we're talking about just the cutting edge. So not the large primary above it. Um, and it's important to understand when you're talking about angles, is, um, is that inclusive or is that per side? Sure. So per side would mean, as you're looking at this knife, what is the angle of one side of my knife? And that's gen that's how our sharpeners work. So mm -hmm. we say, if you set an angle at 20 degrees, it's 20 degrees on one side. If somebody's talking about an inclusive, you would have 20 on this side, 20 on this side, gives you an inclusive angle of 40 degrees. Okay. So it's important to understand how they're describing that angle, sure. whether it's inclusive or per side. Um, and in general, you'll find knives and throughout the world are gonna be anywhere from say 10 degrees, and we're talking per side again, gonna be anywhere from 10 degrees up into the you know 30 to 35, depending on what you're doing. You know, Lower angles for kitchen, kind of middle of the road for your pocket knives. And then if you have blunt force instruments like camp knives and stuff, you'll put a little bit steeper angle on them so they can handle abuse. Sure. Thanks for that, Steve. So we've got a new diagram out here for you guys going over some knife anatomy. Steve, take us through some knife anatomy for the audience. And for simplification purposes, we're just going to stick to the blade. Okay. So one of the first things we'll see here is the choil. And what this does for us, is it gives us a little sharpening choil. So if you see right here, there's just a, a curved section of the blade that's been ground out. What that gives us access to the very heel of the ed, or heel edge. It makes it just much easier to sharpen that knife so you can get right down into the belt or on the stone or on the ceramic. So that'll be you back here at the heel. So obviously the very back part of it is the heel of the blade. Um, the spine is the thickest part, the back of your blade running up the side here. The bevel is the cutting edge. That is the part of the knife that we affect when we're sharpening it. That's where you want to build that burr and create a sharp edge, which is the very edge right here is the apex of those two surfaces coming together to create that sharp edge. A swedge, you'll even see on this knife, there's just a little bit of material removed on either side of this to help thin out that edge so you can get better penetration out of it. And then the tip is just the very front part of the knife with the point being the very last part of the cutting edge that you sharpen. It's right out there to that little needle tip. Perfect. So a little disclaimer on some of the information we threw out there today. Um, the knife world is ever changing and it's growing. There are a ton of different manufacturers and custom makers out there. So the knives we have available to us anymore are not the same as the traditional styles that my grandfather used to know. So some of these are basically are gonna be considered kind of a modified. We went over the general shapes and forms. I know not all of them are perfect. Please don't beat us up too bad over that, but we did what the best we could with what we have. We said modified. We covered it, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that works. Well, Steve, it was a lot of fun having you on, man. Um, thank you, as always, for coming and sharing your knowledge with us. And we know this was a, a, a 101, so we went over a lot of information really quickly. If there's anything you guys want to know more about or take a deep dive on, whether it's uh, primary bevel grinds and the differences between them, uh, whether it's more information on I hate to say it, but blade steels. Maybe we could do a discussion on that. That's always a rabbit <laughs> hole. But get down in the comments. Let us know what you guys are looking for. And thanks for watching.